Thank you, guys. And uh, this is the third time to welcome join the training. And today is the third day. And uh, about the wellness part, maybe today finish we will have half topic finished. Okay. Of course, before we talk about the detail of today topic, uh, let's also have a brief summary of yesterday. Yes. At the beginning, we explain the topology for you, right? We hope after finishes the training, you can do the function like the right technology in your network. In the first day, we talk about the IP address, L2 VPN, L2 switch principle, and the VLAN. And yesterday, we talk about the STP, spanning tree protocol and the link aggregation. And about the STP, why we need, why we need this technology? The reason is in our network, if we only have one, only one pass or maybe one device is in the main pass to follow the traffic. If one link is broken or maybe one device is, is broken, the network cannot work in. So this problem we call a single failure. So we hope we can increase the multiple, devi multiple devices or more links to provide a backup function. But like the topology, if we use uh, lots of devices like here, there maybe is a loop, right? If in our network we have the loop, the MAC address table will delete the same information, delete, add, delete, add all the same time. So this is the effect of the loop. And uh, the message will be forwarded all the time until the devices like the switch, like the host, like the gateway devices, don't have any resources like the CPU. And finally, the network is broken. And then the traffic will be discarded. So this is uh, the high risk of uh, the loop. So how to avoid the loop? We can use the Spanish tree protocol STP. And in the STP, if we add the configuration of the Spanish tree, then the STP will select who is the root according to the bridge ID. And about the bridge ID, the first uh, uh, two bytes is the priority, and small value is better. And uh, if the priority is same, we will compare the micro address. Also, is smaller is better. So according to the bridge ID, we can select uh, in our layer two network. Pay attention, STP is in your layer two network not about the layer three, like the router or layer three switch. And then the rest of the devices will become the non-root bridge. And in the non-root bridge, we will select uh, one RP in one switch, right? Compare with the cost value. Of course, we have to compare the cost far away from the root bridge. And the uh, smaller cost value means higher bandwidth. We will think this interface will be better. If the cost value is same, we will continue to compare the bridge ID. Also, the same, the same principle. Smaller value will be better. And the, if the bridge ID is same, we will compare with the port ID. And the port ID is combined of the port priority and the port number. So finally, we can select one root port in the non-root bridge. And then one link, at least one DP. And this DP finally will be, to, will be used to force the traffic. And the, the rest of the interface will finally be selected to become the AP, LNET port. And about this LNET port cannot force the traffic until some normal link is broken and we will recover this again to select some, um, uh, some broken interface to become DP or to become RP to follow the traffic. So this is a main rule in the STP. And about the STP, we have two types of BPDO, bridge protocol data unit. And all the switch will transfer this BPDO to calculate the rule and finally to block in which interface. And another BPDO we call is TCN BPDO. When the network topology uh, change, for example, one link is broken or maybe add a new link, 
we have to do the convergence again. One reason we have to make sure each interface's uh, rule is changed or not. Otherwise, maybe there is a new loop. The second one, if your network topology changed, we also have to reflect your MAC address table. Otherwise, the devices will follow the traffic according to the old MAC address table. Maybe you cannot follow the traffic out successfully. So if you have the TCM BPDO and have some TC message, then you can make the refresh time from 300 seconds shorter to become 50 seconds. So this is the advantage of the TCM BPDO. But in the STP, we also have lots of problems, right? One main problem is although maybe we select an interface to become RP or DP, we have to wait the interface data to become forwarding data. Then we can forward the traffic to help the devices to forward the traffic, to forward the traffic. And by default, the time is 30 seconds. That means if you use a cable to connect with each other, you have to wait at least 30 seconds later, then you can force uh, to wait the internet resources. And in this time, also maybe um, one link is broken or one device is, is broken, we have the TCM BPDO to shorter refresh time of the MAC address table. Also, we have to wait 30 seconds, uh, 30 seconds at, at least. So this is the biggest problem of the STP. And we also have some advanced feature of the STP like the port faster technology. To make some interface can directly enter the forwarding state to shorter the time. This is an advanced feature. And another technology, maybe in the future, we will have a chance to discuss together like the ISTP, like MSTP to make the time shorter. But Another one, in some special scenario, we will use a new technology we call is link aggregation. For example, like this topology about the distribution switch, we have two link directors to connect with each other. And about the distributed switch or maybe some call switch, it will have higher bandwidth, higher bandwidth interface. We hope we can let all the link to follow the traffic. So in this scenario, if you use the STP, at least one interface will be blocked in order to avoid the loop, right? So if we use the technology of link aggregation, we can combine multiple physical interface to become the logical interface. And all the link can be used to force the traffic. Although one link is broken, we also can transfer the message by another link. So this is the advantage of the link aggregation. And about the link aggregation, we have two types. One is a static link aggregation, and another one is dynamic. Static means I will do the aggregation site by site. I don't care about in my other site will become the member or not. I only care about my site. And the second one, if you use the dynamic protocol, we will use LACP in the devices and we will send out the LACP message and to select who is a special interface and then according to this interface finally we will select the member ports okay so there are two types and about the link aggregation we also have some limitation for example the maximum member is eight in some special series we have limited the number to become the eight and uh, if you use the uh, LACP running in your devices. And another special thing is we have two types of dynamic link aggregation. One we call is active and another one is passive. The passive is special. I only send you, uh, give the LACP package to you until I receive the message. Then I will reply it. Otherwise I'm waiting. So when you do the configuration of the dynamic, at least one site, the, the type should be active. Okay, so this is a link aggregation. And uh, today our topic will discuss a new technology we call is VSU because although we think the link aggregation is better than STP, right? 
Uh, some scenario like this topology. If the access switch also can use these two interfaces to become the uh, use the link aggregation, but this cannot work because we have two link and to connect with different upper devices. So in this scenario, the link aggregation cannot be work. So if we use the VSU on the distributed switch to make two in the devices to become a logical devices, then the link aggregation also can be used on the access switch. So link aggregation is a technology to combine multiple interfaces to become a logical interface. But about the VSU is used to combine multiple physical devices to become a logical devices. So they are two different uh, technology, but also both of them in order to use the, in the network to prove the network reliability. So this is a function. And uh, later we will see the detail of the VSU. The VSU te uh, technology principle. First, we have to know the full name. VSU is a virtual switching unit. Like the name, this is uh, the technology for switching devices. And uh, this is a virtualization technology and we can combine physical devices to become a logical one devices. So after finish this one, one advantage we call is the access switch or maybe the upper router, we can use a link aggregation. Another one is if we do the configuration, we only need to log in one devices, then all the command can be directly cross these devices and then to send this command to all the devices. So this is easy to do the management. Okay, so this is the advantage. And we hope after taking this course, you can describe the basic concepts and the principle of the VSU. That's mean why we use the VSU and what's the advantage and how to work. And the second one, you have to know the basic configuration of the VSU. If you want to deploy the VSU in your network, in your network, what is a key configuration? First, first let's see the overview. Why we need the uh, technology of VSU, like this topology, right? We have the typical network type, access layer, distribute layer, and the core layer. And uh, about the distribute layer and the core layer, there is a loop, right? And maybe we will use the technology like STP or RSTP or MSTP to avoid the loop and also can provide some redundant link. But pay attention, yesterday we talked about the principle of STP and explain some key command of the STP. The configuration is very easy. But the disadvantage is in the STP, if one link is broken, this link cannot force the traffic all the time until reconvergence re again. And uh, we select the block interface to become forwarding. Then this interface can work. So if you also want to use this link to force the traffic, one maybe the scenario is, is useful, you can use a link aggregation. Another solution, maybe you can use MSTP. But about the MSDP, the configuration is very complex. And if in your network you have lots of devices, the configuration will be more complex. So to provide the redundant gateway, of course, later we will talk about the technology of the VRIP. Usually we will use the VRIP and the MSTP together. But how to make the network easier? Another solution is we can use the VSU. So this is the traditional reliability network. We have lots of disadvantage. The first one is complex network technology. We have to know. You have to know the principle of this STP and VRIP. Then you have to know the command, then to do the configuration. Later, you also have to do the troubleshooting. And the second one, the fault recovery time is typically in the range of seconds. 
for example, like the STP, if we the redundant link, we need to, we need the redundant link to work. At least 30 seconds you have to wait, but it's too long for us. For example, now I let you to wait me 30 seconds, right? The time is too long. And the third one, some link are blocked and the link bandwidth resources are wasted. So this is the main three disadvantage of the traditional reliable network. And uh, if we use the VSU, this is the new technology. We can combine multiple devices together to become a virtual switch. Although the same topology, we have the access switch, we have the distributed switch. If we use the VSU together, finally, this will be a logic devices for us, right? So for the customer, the logical topology will be like, like this one. We only have two access switch and one logical distributed switch, and we have multiple link to connect with each other. So in this scenario, we can do the link aggregation together. For the access switch, they will think, I only have one up layer switch, and I can use the link aggregation and finally to use all the bandwidth in the same time. And I also can provide some load balance function. So this is the advantage. So use a VSU, we say we can provide a higher reliability network. And the advantage of the VSU, the first one is the management. Administrator, our energy only need to connect one device for unified management because after, later I will to show you the detail concept. If we have the VSU, we will select one master. In every configuration, we can direct log in the master and do to do the configuration. The second one, we can streamline the network topology, connect the aggregate link and the perhaps and the no layer two loops and no need to configure STP protocol again. And we also, this is the protocol of the layer two and about the other protocol like OSPF, OSPF is a dynamic routing protocol. Within the VSU, maybe we have several devices, three or four devices and combine together. Between them, we don't need to run in OSPF again because logically this is one device. And also we don't need to run the PIM. PIM is a protocol of the multicast. If we, in your network, you use a service of the multicast, maybe between the router, you will choose the protocol of the pin. And SNMP is a management protocol between the controller and the devices. And uh, we can select a lot of devices resources from this protocol. So between these devices, in the VSU, we don't need, we don't need to run in this protocol again. It's very easy to maintain. And another one is the fault recovery time reduced to million seconds. The failover time will form from 50 to 200 ms, million seconds. So this also is an advantage. If one device is broken, maybe we can immediately to select a new one and working again. So this also is an advantage. And another one, we can improve the bandwidth uh, utilization, right? Because all the link within the VSU or maybe the VSU devices with the access switch or maybe call switch, all the link we can use uh, link aggregation together with the VSU and uh, then all the link can work. So this is the advantage of the VSU. And later, let's see some basic concept of the VSU technology. In the, the switch, first you have to support this feature. Not all radio devices will support the feature. That's why maybe in some scenario, you only can use the STP or maybe only can use the VS uh, link aggregation because you, the devices have to support the VSU at first. Okay, and uh, if the device supports the VSU function, 
Then the switch will have two working mode. One is stand alone. This is a default mode. That means if you give the power and use the cable to connect with each other, then they were working alone. This is independent devices. This will have the mic adjustable belong to themselves. And also maybe this is a layer three switch we will have the routing table, something like this. But if you want to use the VSU function, you have to change the mode to become the VSU. Okay, also later I will show you the command, how to change it. And uh, in the VSU, we have lots of uh, concept, the, like the domain ID, switch ID, priority. And uh, in the VSU group, we have to select one devices to become the main chassis we call as master and another one for standby. Also, maybe we have the third device, have the fourth device. They have their own rule. And how to select who is a master, who is a standby, we also have some principle. And uh, uh, maybe about these devices, we have two plans. One is control plan and another one is data plan. Control plan usually is used to, uh, to do some calculation like the routing information, like the mic address, uh, mic address restore, something like this. And finally, to get a forwarding table, then your data plan will help the traffic to force the uh, help the devices to force the traffic. And uh, about this plan, we call it data plan. So after we use the VSU to mix the devices together, maybe one device is one control plan, one data plan. But if you have two devices, only one control plan will work to do the calculation, like the brain of people. And all the devices data plan can follow the traffic and according to the forwarding table from the brain, from the control plan of the master. So this is a basic one. And about this page, you only need to know we have two modes, one for stand alone and another for VSU. The key point is if you want to let the VSU mode work, work successfully, you have to change the mode to become VSU. So this is a working mode. And later I will explain one by one what's the key parameter of the VSU. And when we do the configuration, uh, maybe some scenario we have to care about these parameters. The first one is the switch ID. And the switch ID is the main ID of the switch in the VSU and the range from one to eight. So this is the member ID and the range also limits how the maximum number in the VSU. And by the default, the number is one. And in the standalone, we also, we only have two dimensional formats. That's why when we do the configuration, when we enter the interface, like a gigabit Ethernet 2 slash 3, right? And because we were directed to ignore the switch ID, because everyone's switch ID is the same. And the two and the three, two is maybe is the service line number and the three is the port number. And about the VSU mode, we will have three decimal format because we have to add the switch ID. In the VSU, different devices, different switch ID to distinguish different devices. So like the example, gigabit Ethernet 123. One is the member number, and the two is the slot number, and the three is the port number. Okay. Of course, maybe you, when you use the normal switch, you will find the second number will become zero. That's because you only have one slot. If you have multiple slots, like uh, like some high performance devices, you will see the interface like two slash three, five slash three, something like this, because you have lots of slots, lots of slots in the devices. So after we finish the configuration, you use the command show switch virtual. The first one parameter is the switch ID. And the noted is, we have to ensure that the device's number 
of all the devices should be unique in the same VSU. Maybe in your network, you have multiple VSU, it doesn't matter, but within the same VSU, the switch ID should be different. So this is the first one, switch ID. And the second one is about the domain ID. And the domain ID is used to identify the VSU devices and you will need to distinguish different VSU. Maybe you have multiple VSU. And the domain ID of two switches, if several switch in the same domain ID, the domain ID should be the same. Pay attention about this part. Otherwise, maybe they will be on to different VSU. And the value range is from one to 255. The default value will become 100. And uh, in the non-VSU status, we have to use the command switch virtual domain and give the, give the value. But in the VSU status, we can directly enter the VSU domain configuration. And uh, this is a key command if you want to enter different devices. This is the command config the domain ID which switch and what's the domain uh, what's the domain ID and uh, we can save it after we finish the configuration and use the command this value will be the second line the domain ID and in the same virtual switch and all the domain ID will be saved so this is a key point we have to know about domain ID they have to become same and the third one is the priority Priority is used to select finally what the rules the devices will be used. Maybe you will be the active, the active switch, like the master, and uh, maybe is a standby, maybe is a candidate. So we will compare the priority. But about this priority, uh, the principle a little different. The larger priority will be better. Okay, and the range also is from one to 255. So before, the default one is 100, is 100. So in this VSU, we have four switches. And the first one will select to become the active because the priority is 200. And about this value, we have the first 200 and then the second 200. The first 200 means the priority of the current operation. But in this 200 means the priority of the current configuration. Usually, for example, when you do the configuration and you save it, when you finish the configuration of the VSU and save it, you have to restore the devices. This priority will be same. Otherwise, the default value is 100. And maybe you give the configuration will become 200. So this is a little different, the priority, OK? And the second one is the status. The, we have to check the VSU can work normally or not according to the status. And we have four status. The normal status is OK. OK means now the operation is normally. And the, finally, this is a standard status. We maybe the active devices will calculate the routing information, some micro address information, and then to give you the forwarding play. So this is a state. And the other one maybe is a recovery. You have to consider what, uh, which scenario we will see different status. And according to the status, we can to do the troubleshooting. And about the recovery means Maybe the VSU system is split, or maybe the BFD or link aggregation detection is configured, and the standby de devices will be in this state. For example, at first they will belong to the same VSU, but later some link between the devices is done, is broken, and the standby devices, the state will become recovery. In the recovery devices, we cannot follow the traffic. Otherwise, maybe there are some mistake in our network. When two split VSU system are merged, 
the sli the size that lost the election is also briefly in this data. Okay, so this is a briefly time to take the state to become recovery. And the third one is leave. It belongs to the process data and only exists during the restarting process of the devices. Our steady state only the okay, and maybe the standby devices also cannot work because we have the split, the split action in our network. The state will become recovery. But the live only is a process data. And the last one is isolate. If the switch ideas are the same, for example, when we give the configuration and give the run parameters, and uh, this I, uh, several devices ID are same, then one device is the state will become isolate. Okay. And uh, in this data, all the VSU link cannot work, will be in the down state and also cannot force the traffic. So when we do the configuration, we have to keep, we have to do that the switch ID will be unique in our network. And uh, another one, uh, devices in the recovery state will put all the interface to become shut down state. In this state, the device's interface cannot force the traffic, but except the VSL interface. And later I will show you what means VSL interface. We will use this special interface to send out some VSL message and to detect the state, for example, your active is working or not. If not, maybe we have to select a new active, like the detector package, okay? When the discovery state discover, uh, devices detect a non-recovery state neighbor, it will auto automatically reboot. So this is uh, the special for the recovery state. And about the rules, we have three types. One is active, and in one VSU, there are only one device will become active state. And uh, the second one will be standby, and also only one device will become standby. And the, the rest of devices will be candidate devices. And pay attention, the active devices will do everything of the control plan, like synchronization configuration for, for all member devices, and maybe the time synchronization and, the, and so on. And also maybe we do some route calculation, something like this. And about the standby, I can get everything from the active devices. And I only have one thing to do is wait, is wait the active devices is broken and I will become the new active. So this is a function of the standby devices. And if the standby to become a new active, we will select a new standby from the candidate. So this is uh, the principle. When the standby fails, the system will automatically select a new standby. If the active fails, the standby will directly to become a new active. And then we also have to select a standby devices again. Of course, if you only have two devices in your network, one will become active and another one will become standby, okay? And a very important uh, concept is about the VSL link, virtual switching link. This is a special aggregated link. And uh, the, on this link, we will transfer the control information and the data stream between devices within the same VSU system. And uh, the ports exist should be in the aggregated port group. So, in these devices, you have to also have to configure the link aggregation, but only used for the VSL port. And uh, who can be the member of the VSL? Maybe it's the physical interface. And about this physical interface, we can be the stack ports, Ethernet ports, also optical ports. This interface can be the member. And uh, pay attention in your network. Between two devices, 
at we suggest at least two VSL link because this one is very useful. One is on the link we will do the configuration synchronization, right? And also some time synchronization. And uh, another one is after we calculate the forwarding forwarding table, we will use a VSL link to forward to all the member devices. The third one, we will use the VSL to VSL link to detect the state of active standby and candidate. If we detect the active cannot send out the message in the period of time, maybe we will select a new one. Otherwise, if all link is broken, the state will be some. The state will be changed. For example, if the active, if the standby leaves the VSU, maybe the state will become recover, and then to make all the interface to become the shutdown because this in this devices cannot follow the traffic now. Otherwise, maybe make the loop to have a big effect of the network. So this link is very important. So we suggest at least two link to become the VSL link. And we will give the configuration of the link aggregation to become aggregated port. OK. And uh, if a high end devices to form the VSU, it is recommended to use different line cards to form a VSL. Also, it is a suggestion suggestion to provide a higher reliability availability for the VSL link. Maybe one slot is broken, all the interface cannot work. But if they belong to different slot, use a different line card, line card. If one slot is broken, the other slot still can work. OK, so this is a suggestion of the VSL link. Of course, who will become the VSL interface? We also use a command to let the devices know. This is a, a basic concept of the VSL, a VSU. And the second one, let's say some basic principle of the VSU, how to force the traffic and uh, some key configuration. And about the control plan, Within the VSU, we will use a special message to for the traffic. Maybe when we connect with the access switch, the access switch will forward us using the ordinary, ordinary Ethernet message to do the encapsulation, to add the source and the destination MAC address, source and the destination IP address, something like this. But after the message is transferred to the VSU member, the first member, and uh, later check the uh, maybe forwarding, um, forwarding table. And then we will find that we have to send this message to another member of the VSU. We have to do a new encapsulation, use the HG message. And here is the encapsulation of the normal Ethernet message and the HG message. It's a little different. But you don't need to remember, after we finish the configuration, the devices will do the encapsulation automatically. But you have to know in the devices, the communication message is a little different. OK, so this is a message. And uh, about the VSU control principle, logically, each member of the VSU is regulated as a devices without only one and with only one entry. Because, for example, for the switch three, I will think I only connect with one devices. This is a logical devices because we already use the VSU. But in the VSU, in this topology, we have two devices, right? And each member devices will maintain its own entry information. That means on one device, on switch one, we will see the, uh, see the table. And on switch two, we also can see a table. But the difference is all the member entry information is consistent. So you can see for logically, for switch three, we only have one entry. And uh, for itself, 
where one device is one entry, but the information is consistent. So this is uh, the control plan. About the control plan, maybe we have two devices, maybe we have four devices, and uh, only one control plan is working. So someone also maybe say VSU have some disadvantage. If this active devices is broken, we need time to select a new devices to become the active. And, and if we do the upgrade update in our network, there are also some mistake maybe happen. Okay, maybe happen. And if all the devices split, the configuration will also have a lot of problem. For example, who if all the devices cannot work, the traffic will be broken in the time until we recover the VSU. We recover the VSU. So in some scenario, if your network needs the uh, time can uh, need the traffic to be forwarded all the time, you have to consider to use a VSU or not. Because if the split happened, maybe there's some problem. This is a control plan. And another one for the local forwarding. What means local forwarding? If here we use four devices to combine a ring and to become a VSU, and later I select a message from outside the switch, and then I will check the check the table and the table will show us you have to send the message out and the out interface is the same with these devices so this one we call is local forwarding and about the local forwarding we will find the path is shortest okay is the shortest and uh, another one is local forward first local forward first means if we check the information and check the table, and we found a lot of uh, uh, out interface, and we hope we can use the local forward at first, it has a higher priority. Because if you choose the other devices to help us to forward out, although maybe you finally can forward the traffic to the destination, but in the devices, you, the traffic pass through several devices, maybe the pass will become the sub-optional forwarding. So we hope the local forwarding first is enabled and by default, this function is enabled. And we have two types, one for AP configuration and another for ECMP configuration. AP is a great gate port, right? And ECMP is a load balance way to follow the traffic according to your load balance path. And the local forwarding first function one is for AP, the command is like this, switch virtual aggregate port LFF. LFF is local forwarding uh, forward first. Enable the interface to make the local forwarding priority. And the ECMP is, uh, the command is switch virtual ECMP LFF. And we can en enable the ECMP local forwarding first. ECMP means, for example, there is a ring and how to go to the, like this one, how to wait uh, the left switch. We have two paths and this path have the same cost. So this link we can call this is the ECMP. And if we have the aggregate port on the devices, we hope, for example, your aggregate can for the local traffic at first. So we have two different models. And uh, an another one for the noted, if we use the layer three devices to become the VSU, it is recommended that the user can use IP-based AP load balance and to choose the source IP address, destination IP address, or source or destination IP address to make the load balance successfully. Because the layer three devices for traffic can according to the layer three information according to the IP. And another one for the unicast forwarding. Local forwarding means the same devices receive the message and the same devices will forward the traffic out, use different interface. And the unicast forwarding means the inbound and outbound interface between different member devices. For example, like this topology. 
the switch ID one devices receive the message. And according to the forwarding table, I will select the switch two as the best next hope. And I will force the traffic to switch two, and then the message will be sent out. Of course, in the topology, I will tell you this is the next hope. But in the real dynamic routing protocol, dynamic routing protocol uh, like OSPF, we will think one VSU is one devices. So the cost value only will be at one. And if you use a RIP as a dynamic routing protocol, the hope only will become plus one, not about two. Okay, because this is a logical devices. Unicast for wording. And then let's see the key configuration of the VSU. If you want to make one interface to become VSL, or maybe you want to let one devices to join the VSU, you have to add the command on the devices. So how to give the configuration? We have to know which step we have to do. So if you are clear about this, this part, you only to remember which command is used is enough. And about the VSU configuration, the first one for the determining the VSU connection methods, we have two parts, one for VSL, special link, only used to detect the state is ready or not. Uh, and also we can transfer some message on the VSL link. And this VSL link is used to preferred in the ring type connection. And the multi VSL link can be used, at least two link. And another one for BFD. BFD is very useful. And uh, this detection technology not only can be used in VSU, we also can use it in so uh, lots of scenarios. So BFD also is a special technology used for the detection. And the second one, you have to clarify the VSU member version. And uh, the version have to be same, consistent have to be uh, system because they have to do the negotiation and also we'll check the version part. And the third part, if we check all the information is correct and then we can do the configuration of the VSU and uh, we have to modify the devices mode to become VSU because we have two parts, one, one is the standalone and another one is a VSU. And the third one, we have to configure the host detect. Maybe your VSU, maybe your BFD. So this is a key point we have to, to, do, the com to do configuration of the VSU. And how to give the configuration of the VSU? We have several parameters I have to do. The first one, we have to configure the domain. The domain should be set should be consistent if this device is in the same domain. And the default value is 100, okay? And the command is in the global configuration site, give the command switch virtual domain one. And then you have to configure the device ID. After you add the configuration of domain one, we will, add, we will enter the domain configuration. Then to give the switch number, the domain ID should be same. So switch one and switch two. So domain ID, both of them to become one, but the switch ID should be unique. For example, switch one, the ID is one. Switch two, the ID is two. And then you have to give the priority because the priority will finally decide who will become the active device. And the command is switch one priority 200. But about the switch two, the prior priority is 150. So later the switch one will become the active devices, but switch two will become the standby. And the next step, we have to configure the VSL port. Okay. The VSL port, pay attention, this port must be the active interface. You have to check the, for example, your indicator is green or not, and your data of the physical layer is up or not. And then you also have to use the cable to connect with each other. 
And uh, the key configuration is like this. In the global, give the command VSL port. And you can add the interface into the VSL port. Like the so interface 10 gigabit 0, uh, 0 slash 15 and uh, 0 slash 16. Although the other side, these two interfaces must have to connect with each other. OK. Of course, one link also is also can work in, but has a high, has a lower reliability. OK, so this is a configuration of the VSU. And later, we have to finish the, uh, we have to save the configuration and use the command WR and the full command is right. And we have to change, uh, convert the state to become the VSU mode. Otherwise, this is a standalone. Switch convert mode virtual. And then the system will ask you, are you sure to convert the switch to become the virtual mode? You have to select a yes. And then he will ask you, do you want to recover the config TXT from this information? You only select no because we need the newest configuration. And the same operation of the switch too. You have to change the mode to become the virtual. And also select yes and no. And later the devices will reboot. Pay attention. In the reboot time, the devices cannot work, cannot follow the traffic. So in your network, you have to share with your customer if you add the configuration of the VSU. Until the device is reboot, uh, reboot successfully and the select who is active, who is standby, then the devices can work. So before the state successfully, the network cannot be used on the VSU. So pay attention about this part. And another one, you can configure the dual host detection. And we suggest to use a BFD. We have to add the BFD port and enable the BFD. And uh, pay attention, the perform of BFD configuration after waiting for the VSU to be established successfully. After we uh, establish it successfully, then you can add the configuration of the BFD. And uh, enter the global and enter the interface you have to make the interface to become layer three switch, uh, to become layer three port. And the key key point, uh, key configuration is no switch port. By default, this switch, sorry. By default, this switch uh, uh, interface is layer two. So you have to change it to become layer three on the BFD interface. And then, on the VSU domain one, do active detect BFD and to show us who is your BFD interface is enough. And pay attention about this part. You will find we have two interfaces to become the BFD, but the different one is the first number. One is one and another one is two, right? One is the switch in the VSU, the switch ID number is one, another one is two. So we will use the switch one and the switch to two devices and the port number 13 to become the BFD interface. So this is a configuration. And of course, if you use a BFD, we will send out the BFD message to detect the network or maybe it's the, my neighbor can work normally or not. This will take some resources for your devices. So pay attention about this one. And another one, after you finish the configuration, then you can use some, some command to check the status. The first one is you can see the light. And about the primary light of the engineer, the master will always be green. Master also is the active devices. But the slave is this slave is a standby devices. The light will become off because after you finish the VSU successfully, we only have one control plan. 
And、uh, then you can use the command show switch virtual. You can say the switch ID, domain ID, what's the priority. Now the status and the rule. Okay, active or standby. And、uh, after the VSU is formed, by default, the console port of slave machine cannot be managed by default. So you have to connect with the, the master the、uh, active devices. But if you want to check some configuration or check some message for uh within about the second devices, how to do it? Because the console interface of the standby cannot work, right? You can directly on the active devices use a command like this: session devices two, and then you will directly to enter the devices two. Call standby. Two, and then you can use the command to check, or maybe some others. So that's why we say it's very convenient to do the management because you can directly to use one console or maybe telnet into one devices. Then you can manage all the devices in the same VSU. And another one, you can use the command show switch virtual link to check the VSL information. And about the interface, VSL AP, we have two interface. One for the switch one interface one, switch two interface one, and the stator is up. And another side is two one and one one. That means we use the cable to connect each other. And this is the message we receive and send out. And how long time we establish the link with each other. And also, you can see the VSU topology information. If you don't know the physical connection, you can use the command show switch virtual topology. And we can see the topology now. We have the train topology. Only use the, this is not the ring. We only use the VSL link to connect with each other. And the interface is switch one. We use the first interface to connect with the switch two, also the first interface. Okay, and the switch one is the active. What's the mic address? Switch two is a standby. What's the mic address? So this is a configuration. And also you can see some load balance. Show switch virtual balance, and now we use aggregate port LFF enable. And also, you can show the load balance detail, the load balance based on the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. If the message have different source MAC address or different destination MAC address, this information maybe will be sent beyond to different link. This is used for load balance. Of course, if you only have one link, although maybe you add the load balance, all the traffic will use the same link. So this is the basic of the VS、uh, VSU, and、uh, the first one we have to know why we have to use this technology, because this is a, a system virtualization technology. It's a little different from the link aggregation, and、uh, if we use the VSU technology, we can make the management simply. And we can use the、uh, simple topology, and we can also reduce the failure recovery time, and also can improve the bandwidth use utilization. So this is an advantage. And the key point when you do the configuration, we have to know the step. First,、uh, we have to deter determine the what the connection methods we will use, and then you can specify the version or the member version should be same. And the third one, we have to configure the VSU and modify the mode to become the VSU mode. And pay attention: after you modify the mode, the devices will reboot. And in the reboot time, the traffic cannot be forwarded from these devices. And the last one, you have to configure dual host detection. Okay. So this is a part of our VSU. Uh, lots.
nearly one hour to explain about this part. So any questions of the VSU? Maybe we can write down now or discuss together. <laughs> 